what's up guys doing here welcome back to another China phone review and today we're going to have a look here at the Ulephone Vienna here the rose gold edition so why is a Chinese smartphone actually called Vienna now you know Vienna is the capital of Austria Austria especially Vienna is actually known for um, the good music so good classical traditional music and this phone is also pretty good for music because it has a DAC converter so what does it stand for digital to analog converter and that means the output of the 3.5mm headphone jack should be really really good. It also has pretty good preamps and today we're going to find out if this $170 smartphone can keep up with an iPhone 6s Plus. So I would say let's get directly started and let's check it out. Alright guys, so what do you get for the cheap price? Now the package looks quite like a Yumi package, inside you will find a charger which is 5 volts, 1.5 amps, so not really quick charging and it has a pretty um, big battery though, it's 3250 mAh, the phone itself lasts around 2 days. Inside of the package well you will find the charger and all the other accessories like the USB cable you need, then there was a case included, some kind of transparent silicone rubber case and also a screen protector as well as a user manual which was well kind of useless because there's not so much information inside. Anyway, um, the specs on the paper, they look pretty good. 3GB of RAM, 32GB of ROM, a pretty huge battery, an octa-core processor, the MTK6753. It's not the fastest octa-core processor, but it's quite okay for simple tasks. Um, you'll wait to see the benchmarks. Then regarding the cameras, we have a 13 megapixel Panasonic camera on the rear side, so I guess just a sensor is made Panasonic. Front-facing camera has an Omnivision sensor, and well, um, the front-facing camera is really buggy and I think it's a software problem. Regarding the software, it runs Android Lollipop, so there's no Marshmallow, but they're already working on it. But you know, you the phone with updates, you probably have to wait for a very long time. Anyway, the phone should support LTE, um, yeah, I will later show you the frequencies or you will just find them down below in the description. And the display looks also very good, so it's pretty stunning. It's a full HD resolution display on the 5.5 inches. The whole phone is made out of plastic, but um, the display itself gives it a really premium look because it's an LTPS panel made by Sharp, has really good sharpness, um, great viewing angles and also nice color reproduction. So also, it has a 3.5mm headphone jack all along with an IR blaster at the top of the frame. With the IR blaster you can control things like an air conditioner or a TV. And well, as I've stated before, it has pretty good preamps, so um, listening to audio over the 3.5mm headphone jack should be a pleasure. We'll later try it out. So at the bottom we have a micro USB port to charge it, we have a special button on the left side of the frame, which is some kind of extra button to start the camera and some other things. We have a dual SIM slot, um, the slot basically holds um, one nano SIM card and one micro um, SIM card, or one nano SIM card and one micro SD card. So if you rely on memory expansion, um, just remember there are 30 gigabytes inside, which is not too bad at all. Then you can just put in a micro SD card, but um, you can't then put in a second SIM card. On the right side we have the buttons, um, like um, the power button and the volume button. They are really stiff and it feels pretty good. The whole phone is made out of plastic though, just as I've stated before, but it feels not too bad at all. And this one here is the rose gold edition. We have the Ulephone logo on the back side, the speaker, the speaker doesn't sound too good at all. Now we have a fingerprint scan on the back side which works quite okay and quite fast. We have a dual LED flash, not dual tone, and um, on the rear side the camera which sticks a little bit out of the device. So well, that's basically it. There is no notification LED and there is no backlight on the capacitive touch button. So this sucks a little bit but I can live with that. Now I would say let's get directly started, let's jump into Android and let me show you some things I've noticed. Alright guys, so it sounds pretty good on paper, but how does it perform in reality? Now this smartphone runs Android Lollipop, so 5.1, and well, there is no Android Marshmallow right now, but they're already working on the software update. So currently I found no bugs in the firmware, so it runs actually quite smooth and absolutely decent. The good thing about Ulephone smartphones is there's absolutely no customization. So basically um, there's the menu and it looks like stock, so vanilla Android. So we can quickly go into the settings and um, just talk about some things. So I have to say Wi-Fi is really good. I can find here a lot of Wi-Fi networks. I was outside, could still get a connection here to the flat's Wi-Fi and that's simply awesome. You will also see a speed test just um, in a second. We have Bluetooth here, we have Hotnot inside, so this is some kind of NFC but MediaTek's own thingy, kind of useless. Yeah, um, the storage, so straight out of the box with some apps, there were actually 25 gigabytes usable from the 32, so this is not too good, not too bad. The battery, it lasts pretty long, so I haven't charged it, one day is over and I'm at 60%. So you can ex um, expect around two days of battery usage, which is quite good. If we check out apps running in the background, so the memory consumption of the ROM is really decent. You have 3 gigabytes of RAM and currently the system only takes around 800 megabytes. That means you have over 2 gigabytes for other applications. 
So well, it has smart settings, which I haven't really used, so um, smart wake and all those things. The fingerprint scanner works pretty fine. So if I lock it, and if I put my finger here on the fingerprint scanner, I don't have to press the power button, so it supports unlocking it from the black screen. The fingerprint scanner is really accurate and fast, but make sure you register your finger multiple times because this really um, boosts the performance of the fingerprint scanner. Yeah, all in all, that's basically everything about Android. So it's stock Android, as I've told you, and it runs pretty fine. But let's talk about the camera. So the camera application, well, um, it's the basic one you can find on MTK smartphones. And yeah, the front-facing camera has a huge software problem. So I guess it's a software problem because the front-facing camera is really super laggy. And that's, this is really not funny. If you try to take a picture, then, well, it's absolutely not cool. If we switch to the rear camera, now 13 megapixels and it looks quite okay. Now color reproduction, the shutter is really fast. If you want to capture a photo, just um, hit the shutter, boom, photo is captured. There is no optical image stabilization, so um, in low light situations this can also be a little bit tricky. And um, you can check out sample pictures right now on the screen. I also provide them on China devices, so make sure you check it out. And you will now see some camera samples, so the video quality. Now it's full HD resolution um, maximum and 720p on the front facing camera. So I would say let's get directly started and let's check them out. So there we go guys, we're now here in the RN's wonderful flat, so testing out the Ulephone Vienna. And well, um, if you want to have more information on this flat here, then check out the description, you will find there's some information about it. So well, um, the rear camera is quite okay if you have plenty of light, but sometimes in previews here really, really laggy. Now um, we can check out here some close-ups. So um, here, now the focus. Now the focus is quite okay, but sometimes not so super accurate. Now the lighting, um, yeah, the lighting adjustment is sometimes a little bit slow. Let's go into a darker room to check this out. So you can see um, how grainy the picture gets. So here we actually have low light, but yeah, here's flow and you can see um, the ISO really <laughs> gets bumped up here and picture looks kind of grainy. So um, the rear camera is okay, but well, not too good at all. So the front facing camera on the Ulephone Vienna is pretty crappy actually. Um, the video is super laggy and I definitely think um, it needs software optimization. Now um, things in the background, um, so the sharpening post processing looks pretty okay, but um, still um, the software has some huge issues. And it's super zoomed in, I have to hold it really far away from my body to get myself on the picture. So the front facing camera doesn't look too good at all. Now GPS here on the UFO from Vienna is quite decent. We've tested it in Vienna and when we had pretty huge buildings on the left and the right side the signal dropped. But we're currently here inside and there are several huge buildings around us and still finds here signal as you can see. Not a good one but it's quite okay. So for navigation we had no issues but it's not as good for instance like on my iPhone. But I have to say it's quite decent. Alright, so let's talk about the overall performance and how it performs in games. So it scores around 37k in the Antutu benchmark, which is quite decent, but not so far away from the 2GB version, but really um, quite okay. With the full HD resolution display in some graphically intense games, it had sometimes a little bit of stuttering, but most of the games are pretty playable, like um, Real Racing 3 and Modern Combat 5. Now also we had a look at other connected toys, if I can say it like that. So today it's um, Star Wars Day, happy Star Wars Day. And we had a look at BB-8, the little droid, and it was a real pleasure to control it with um, the Ulefone Vienna, so it worked pretty good. Also the Overdrive racetrack, which we have right over here. So we had no issues with um, gaming and Bluetooth at the same time, so it actually worked pretty good. Now regarding the sensors, um, we wanted to test it with our VR goggles, but unfortunately there is a magnetic field sensor inside, but it's not working at all. So um, also there's no gyroscope inside, so if you're into VR stuff, then forget it here on the Ulefone Vienna. So guys, we also had a look at the audio quality. So the iPhone here is connected to our home audio system from Sony, and well, we here on YouTube, we have the same files on both smartphones. Listen to the iPhone first, so this is the 6S Plus, there we go. <laughs> So it sounds quite okay, not really good, not really bad. And yeah, you can hear it sounds a little bit washed out, not too good at all. And if we now connect it to the Ulephone, which is $170 in comparison with a $1,000 iPhone 6S Plus. So there we go, we have the same file. Fingerprint scanner, YouTube, let's hit the play button. Whoa, this is really nice audio quality. Just check this out guys. So the highs and lows sound pretty awesome, while on the iPhone it sounds pretty washed out. So this $170 Ulephone has definitely better audio output than the iPhone 6s Plus. I'm actually really surprised, good job Ulephone on the audio quality.
Alright guys, so thank you so much for watching. You'll find more information on the smartphone down below in the description, so check it out on chinadevices.com. And yeah, um, please stay tuned for more videos here from the Iron's wonderful flat, and see you very soon in the next one. Bye-bye.